Today I'm going to give you a little update on State of Indie, uh, by which I mean not the article and video that came out in November, but the article and video that I will be putting up this November. I have already started working on it. These are very time and labor intensive articles. 10 months might seem like plenty of time. Uh, it's really not. So I have already started sending out my surveys. I actually started in February. It's been very slow going, very, very, very slow going, but I finally have enough that I can start to put together a picture of what the article will look like. By the way, if anyone out there, if you are yourself a developer or you know a developer, anyone who has a game coming out in 2024, I have a little mini survey. Uh, I will have a link to it in the description. If you are developing a game in 2024, I invite you to fill that out. It will help me out tremendously. But on to the upcoming article, the research for the upcoming article. The way I do this is I always start with a general purpose, kind of generic questions. I kind of feel out what people are thinking about, what people are worrying about. And then based on that, I will refine the list of questions and make them more specific, get rid of some that kind of aren't getting interesting responses. And even with just the handful of responses I've had so far, I'm already seeing a definite pattern. There's really two things, one of which is, you know, too much competition, which is what I hear every time I do this, so that's not a surprise. But the other one, and this one has shown up in every single response I've gotten thus far, is about financing. If you're at all keyed in to the business of video games, especially over about the last year, you can probably at least guess where this is going. But I do want to take a moment just a few minutes here to discuss this because it's an interesting topic. Lots of people, especially on YouTube and even some of the bigger uh, publications, write, write and talk about these things and get a lot of things wrong. And I want to begin by going back to a concept I've brought up on a few of these, which is the idea of the video game industry being hollowed out. And I want to make sure that everybody understands, because obviously that's a term that's open to some interpretation I want to make sure that everyone understands what I mean. So it used to be, back in the day, the video game industry was really just one thing. It was a handful of large companies. Then we get into the 2000s, especially the late aughts, early 2010s, you see the rise of independent developers. And then as time has gone on, for a while it was just those two things, but as time has gone on, we begin to acknowledge sort of a spectrum of video game production that extends from the very top, from the biggest of the big, AAA developers, you know, Rockstar, Nintendo, I need to give you a lot of names, you know those names, and then it extends down through smaller AAA developers, down into what we now call the AA range, then into sort of the top of the indie, what still referred to as indie, but are relatively large and profitable and well-known, all the way down to your bedroom developers. There's a wide, wide, wide range, right? Video games are not just one thing anymore. It's more of a category of things. It contains multitudes. When I say that the industry is being hollowed out, what I mean is that the middle part of that spectrum is starting to disappear. It's less viable to produce games that are in that middle, that in between the top of the triple A and the hobbyist developer. In the middle is starting to fade out. It's beginning to get, you still see games like that being made, of course, but they're becoming less economically viable as time goes on. And that has been a big point of discussion um, in the indie space and even all the way up into the AAA space because at the bottom end you are starting to see this affect those developers as well. You've seen sort of this uh, polarization where only the smallest and the largest games are really viable anymore and that's becoming increasingly true. And this all comes down to two distinct yet related factors. One that's affecting the top and one that's affecting the bottom. At the top of the industry, we've got a problem that no doubt you've heard at least something about by now, which is 
that games are becoming a lot more expensive. Yeah, these top-of-the-line developers, they're making more and more money. But the costs are going up faster than the revenue. And that obviously creates a problem. Because if that keeps happening, if costs rise higher than revenues, eventually you're screwed. And this has led to some people calling it a bubble, which it's not. I, I, people are just bound and determined for there to be another video game bubble, and it's just not there. Uh, but it is a problem. It's clearly an issue, uh, a long-term issue. And the bigger developers are trying to fix this mainly by leaning into live service. If you've noticed, you may have noticed that despite uh, people on YouTube dancing a jig and declaring that live service is dead every time one of them has some bad news, you may notice there's more of these games being made than ever, more games getting these elements. Obviously, I'm making this the week of Dragon's Dogma 2, which had a lot of controversy over these kind of elements. The reason this is happening is because that is the best way to squeeze more money out of these games. As costs keep going up, developers are going to lean more into live service or live service light elements because that is the best way to ensure that these remain profitable. So that's at the top. Now, down in the trenches, down in the indie space where I do my work, the problem is less one of expense because these are games that by nature are not that expensive. There are costs, though. And the problem we have down here is that the money is going away. Uh, a lot of the like VC that people used to get, or a lot of these funds, those are drying up. In some cases, the money is just gone. In other cases, there's less to go around. And publishers, uh, again, especially the smaller ones, are becoming a lot more selective as time goes on. Uh, I'm hoping that any of you listening to this have seen, uh, there was a video by Danny O'Dwyer not long ago that was about the challenges for indie developers to get uh, into a publisher. And if you haven't seen it, track it down. It's, it's amazing. It's, it really, it's really a horror story, and it's by all accounts getting worse and worse. And that is the complaint I heard from everyone, everyone I talked to is if you need money to get your project going, to get it as refined as you want to complete it, you're not going to be able to find it. It's just not there. The publishers are just getting impossible to work with because the, on the surface of it, these two problems may seem unrelated, but they're really the same, which is that as games become more expensive, they're expected to generate more money. And that, in turn, means that they're also expected to be less risky. You can take a lot more risks with a game that's on a shoestring budget. You didn't put that much money in, so if it flops, if it doesn't do that well, you're not out by much. The more money is behind the project, the more money you have to make. And that makes the people providing that money a lot more risk-averse. Now, at the top, you can see that by uh, a lot of these larger developers really taking fewer and fewer and fewer risks. It's why you see, especially among these smaller AAA developers, you're seeing a lot more remakes and you're seeing them lean more into their popular series. Nobody's creating anything new at the top because new things are too much of a risk. You do a remake, you do a re-release, those are guaranteed money and that's why they're doing more of these because they have a pretty good idea of how much money they can make on them on top of which a lot of those are actually relatively cheap meanwhile on the indie end the problem is publishers really kind of want that same safety whatever venture capital is still out there those groups want that same safety they want less risk which is why you're seeing them take fewer chances as well. You're seeing a lot of the bigger indie games now are falling increasingly into well-defined genres or categories. It's not that you don't see risk being taken. Obviously, developers are taking risks, but it's the smaller ones doing it. So there's no doubt that when State of Indie 2024 comes out, we're going to have to have a nice long discussion about financing, about money, where the money comes from, what you do when you can't get it. It's definitely going to be a topic. I think probably 
we may end up having some discussion about live service or similar elements. Two years ago when I did State of Envy, I did actually have not a lot, but a couple of the people I talked to kind of mentioned that, you know, these days, you know, technology being what it is, there's a lot a solo developer can do. It takes them longer. It takes them longer because they do not have the human resources. But given enough time, a solo developer can actually produce something that approximates AAA quality. It just takes them a very, very, very long time. The one thing that these small developers can never do is anything looking like these big live service games that are coming out of the AAA space, because that requires you to put content out constantly, and a team of one or two or three or four people can never do that. That being said, you are seeing a lot of, and this is something, I think I talked about this a little bit in the last year's article, you are seeing more developers lean into things like DLC, uh, paid expansions, things like that as a way to prolong the life of the game, to make more money off of a game that's already been successful, and also to maintain interest over time. So that's where we are as far as State of Indie is concerned. Again, if you are working on a game right now, or you know someone who is, uh, please go down to the description. You'll find a link to my mini-survey. And while you're here, if you're not a subscriber already, please, please, please subscribe. It helps me tremendously when people do that. Sorry to beg. I know everybody does it, but I'm still not happy about doing it myself. But anyway, that's all for today. So take it easy and I will see you later.